everyone, this is take three for a video that I am probably not going to edit. So you're just going to have to deal with all the weird pauses and weird, awkward stops and starts. It's just how it's going to be. So I'm Catherine Barnes, and this is a channel where I talk about drums, percussion, theater, neurodiversity, and whatever else I feel like talking about. And I haven't posted here in a while because I've been really focusing my efforts on the short form video content, especially on those apps, you know, the one that starts with an I and the one that starts with a T, like I've really been working on that. But tonight I was like, you know what? I don't really want to mess with that. I just want to go back to YouTube and rant because honestly, probably not that many people will even watch it here. <laughs> and for what I'm about to talk about, maybe that's better. So anyway, I went to watch a lot of shows at San Diego Fringe a couple of weeks ago, and now Hollywood Fringe is in full swing. And if you've been following this channel, you know that I did Hollywood Fringe back in 2021 when we were like fresh out of the pandemic and everything was still sort of hybrid and weird. So there are some shows that I want to see this year. Unfortunately, some of them I'm not going to get to see, like Yoni Ki Kahania. I am so bummed that I don't think I can go see that show because it just is on nights that don't work for me. But it seems to be getting great reviews and I'm really excited for my friend who is in it, Tanya Thomas. Check out my interview with her. She's super cool. Anyways, so the three shows that I decided, okay, I'm going to make the trip. I'm going to go see these are Disrobed, which is the show I'm going to mostly talk about. Take Me As I Am, which is a one-woman play about Joni Mitchell, who I had some jokes about in one of my former shows. And then Palmaris, which is all about some Afro-Brazilian history that I'm very into. So I made this plan. I was like, cool, you know, I'll drive up from San Diego and I will see those two shows on Saturday night, the 24th, and I'll stay in a hotel and then I will see Palmaris on Sunday the 25th, and then I will drive home. Cool, sounds good, good plan. Well, here's the thing about Disrobed. Disrobed is a naked play. I think the proper term is a naturist play. It's not even right to say nudist, it's naturist, okay? And the way that it works is the cast is naked, and the audience is supposed to be naked. So. You know, you buy your ticket, it's 30 bucks, which is a lot for a fringe festival. But I guess, you know, you got to pay to have the naked experience, right? So you pay your 30 bucks, you go there and you change out of your clothes, you put them in a bag, you go watch the play, and then you come back out. And I thought, okay, yeah, you know, that sounds, that sounds fun. That sounds novel. I'd like to experience that. I, uh, I, I've been to, you know, some nude beaches in my day. I'm from San Diego, so I've been to Blacks like a handful of times. And then me and a buddy went to uh, Hallover Beach in Miami. That was an interesting experience. So, you know, I guess I have a little bit of cred in this department. But then I realized that that weekend, I'm probably going to be on the rag. So what to do? Well, I did a bunch of Googling to see what do nudist women do when they're on their period. And uh, apparently a lot of them get to wear bottoms, which is great. So then I just wrote a quick email to the disrobed email address that I found on Facebook and said, hey, um, you know, do you allow menstruating audience members to wear bottoms? And they sent me like a very long reply that basically said, you know, we'd really prefer if you come on a weekend where you can be completely naked, but you know, if you're on the rag, um, just like let us know. And then you can like keep your towel. That's the thing. You have to sit on a towel, which is a very good policy. Just like keep your towel over your waist so that you don't upset other people. <laughs> okay. So let's break this down because first of all, I could make a different decision, right? Like I could choose not to see the show or I could go this weekend. But if I go this weekend, I'm not going to be able to see those other shows that I want to see. There could be an argument in favor of doing that because I personally find fringe festivals to be very, very overwhelming. I mean, you know, 
with even as an audience member a couple weeks ago at San Diego French, it was just it's so much to take in all of this theater. And it's hard to go watch a show that's really emotionally taxing and then go see another show and be expected to be like in the right mindset to see it. Right. And then I've talked on this channel at length about the fact that when I did San Diego Fringe the first time in 2018, I basically had a breakdown when it was over. That was as a performer. Right. But I was still going to see lots of shows. And, you know, that's how Fringe works. It's exhausting. So it could be that it would be a good thing for me to just go this weekend because I would be seeing only that, and then I would be driving home. The other thing that I was concerned about, even before I realized the whole period thing, is it's very difficult to go places alone as a woman. I'm guessing it's even more difficult, you know, if you've got, you know, if you're a woman of color, or if you have a physical disability, or if you've got less privilege than I do. But even as me walking through the world as a white woman, if I go to see a movie alone, especially if it's like a new release and there's like a lot of people there, I'm going to get asked to move. You know, no matter where I sit in the theater, some big group is going to come in and they're going to be like, um, excuse me, could you move over so that we can all sit together? It's just expected that I will make space for the convenience of others. So my fear initially in going to see this disrobed play is that, you know, I'll go there and I'll be sitting down somewhere in my birthday suit and, you know, people are going to come in and go, oh, you know, could you just sit over here? Could you just move over here? And that's going to be a lot harder for me to deal with when I'm in that vulnerable state, you know, and I might say something sassy to them and I might get mad and I might just leave. And, you know, if I suspect that's going to be reaction, my reaction Maybe it's just better for me not to go in the first place, okay? So that's one concern. The other concern, and I'll just say it bluntly, is that um, some gross dude is going to assume that because I am naked, I would like to have an extensive conversation with him. This fear comes from my actual experiences at Clothing Optional Beaches. If I go to a clothing required beach, you know, if I go to La Jolla Shores, nobody's going to talk to me and a kid is probably going to run into me or throw a frisbee at me. That's what's going to happen. Now, if I go to Blacks and I'm not wearing anything, I guarantee you some dude is going to come up to me and try to start talking to me and try to get me to go into the water with him. I promise. If I'm there with a friend, he'll probably talk to us, but he won't try to persuade us to go into the water. Or he might. Anyway, so I guess my fear is that if I'm there while I'm waiting for the show to start, I'm going to have to, like, fend off a lot of unwanted conversation because it's assumed that I want to talk because I'm not wearing clothes. So these concerns were there, but then the period thing kind of puts it on a whole new level. Because, I mean, I don't want to get into, like, the mechanics of how I manage my bleeding, but let's just say that it would be better for me to be wearing something. That's all I can say. So another thing that I could potentially do to solve this problem is inspired by drummer Kieran Gandhi, who ran the London Marathon while free bleeding. So no pads, no tampons, no nothing, just bleeding right into her running clothes. I could just show up and not wear clothes, but bring like extra towels, you know, so I can just like bleed into my towels. I don't know how that would go over, to be honest, but I mean, it would certainly be fulfilling their their nude policy. And I wonder, I wonder if like security would notice, hey, like, She's bleeding all over everything. We have to kick her out. I don't know. I really have no idea. I guess now if they've seen this video, they'll probably know that's what I'm contemplating. But I think that would be a great way to kind of protest the fact that this particular policy makes it kind of hard on those of us who menstruate. (laughs) So I don't know. Will I go see this crazy new display? Will I go see it this weekend? Or will I stick with my original plan and go see it when I am potentially bleeding? I don't know. But I will for sure let you know what I ultimately decide. And uh, if, if you have any comments about going to see 
a naturist play or your own naturist experiences or even managing your dang period in some awkward and uncomfortable situations, please leave me some comments because I would love to hear from you about how you handle this type of situation. Okay, see you next time. Bye.